we're going to jump into a conversation and I think it just didn't catch that I was reloading after making that change. We'll do it again. Jump into a conversation and there we go. There's our padding under here. Let's just make sure we can type in here. Cool. So jumping back into our dashboard, the way that we're going to be building this out is by using a stack. So for those of you that don't know, a stack widget is something is a widget that allows you to overlap two things in the same space. The reason that we're going to be using a stack is because any given chat has the option of being sent by the other person or by ourselves. And depending on which it is, it's we're going to be displaying it on either the right side of the screen or on the left side of the screen, but in the same uh, area. So even though, as you'll see, the bubbles won't actually be overlapping on top of one another, we have to use a stack so that we can make use of the same area. And then we're going to use conditional visibility to show it on one side versus the other side, depending on who sent the message that we're talking about. So in our list view over here, the first thing we're going to put in is a stack just like that. And you see it at the bottom here. Then we're going to build out an individual message bubble. So the first thing will be a row to contain it all. Then inside the row, we're going to throw in a container and then we're going to have the message and the timestamp in our individual chat bubbles. So in this container, we're going to stack them on top of each other. We're going to throw in a column. And then in this column, we're going to put in a first text widget that I'm going to duplicate once we do some formatting to it. So first things first, I'm just going to change the color of the container so that we can see it a bit better. We're going to change this later on, just set it to a red for now. I'm going to take off both the width and the height from the container so that it adjusts its size depending on how big the text that's inside it is. On the column containing our text, we're going to add a bit of padding so that it's not so stuck to the side of the container. Maybe, oops, we're going to go in here so that it changes it to all the sides. Maybe 10, 8. Oop. That looks pretty good. On our container, we're going to round the corners. So down here on border radius, give it something like 8 maybe. I think that looks pretty good. On the row itself, I'm going to give it a bit of padding so that it's not so stuck to the sides. Something like 15, maybe, maybe that's a bit too much, 10. That looks pretty good. And then I'm actually going to duplicate the text now. Just like that. So this one on the bottom, I'll give it some padding from the one on top just a little bit. And we're going to make it smaller because this is going to be the timestamp. So we want the actual message to be bigger than the timestamp, maybe something like 10. That looks all right. In our column, we're going to align everything to the start for this one. So everything is left aligned. And then since this bubble, this particular bubble, which is on the left is the text or the chat message from the other person in the chat, we're going to change the container to be a light gray, something maybe like this. Maybe go a bit lighter than that. That looks pretty good to me. And now that we have this set up, this is where we're going to make use of the fact that we're using a stack, this row over here, which encompasses our chat bubble, we're going to duplicate it. And on the second one, which is going to correspond to the bubble of the bubble, the chat bubble of a message sent by our authenticated user by the person currently using the app, we're going to line the bubble to the right, just like that. And then on the container, I'm going to go in and change its fill color to our primary color of the app. And the text will be white. So that it stands out better. All right, cool. So keep in mind here that our text bubbles over here, because we didn't specify a height and a width to our container, if there's more text in here, the container is going to adjust accordingly. If there's less text, it's going to adjust accordingly and it's all going to look good. So now with that in place, we can go back up to our actual list view and we're going to be setting up the query for the chat messages. We're going to go over here. We're adding a backend query. We are querying a collection. We're querying the chat messages collection, and then we have to pass in the reference to the chat 
to whom these messages belong to. So we have this coming from our parameter. We can also just pass in the reference down here, but I'm just going to pass in the parameter that we're receiving, which is the same thing, the reference to the chat. We want a list of documents. And then the ordering of the chat messages, we will be ordering them by timestamp. Like that, we're going to have the newer chats at the bottom, and the older they get, the higher up the screen they're going to get. So with that set up, we're going to hit confirm. It's going to tell us that it's going to generate children dynamically. And there we go. I find that there's maybe a bit too much room. This is because there's padding on each individual chat bubble on the top and on the bottom. That's why this size over here, hopefully you guys see that, is the double of this size over here. So on our rows, instead of setting the padding like this, I'm going to set it to the left, to the bottom, and to the right. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other row. Take this off, go over here and set the padding to the left, to the right, or to the bottom and to the right. So now the bubbles are a bit closer and this distance between them is consistent with the one at the bottom here. So now another thing we have to do is set up the conditional visibility on the actual chat bubbles so that if the message was sent by the other user, um, the chat bubble that appears is the one on the left of the screen. And if the chat message was sent by the authenticated user, it shows up on the right of the screen in the blue purple that we have over here. So on the row over here corresponding to the left bubble like this, we're going to go up here on the right to conditional visibility. And we're going to be setting up a single condition. The first value will be coming from the chat message document over here. And we're checking if the UI of the sender is not equal to the UID or the reference of our authenticated user. Confirm and confirm. So you see here that our condition is we are checking if the user ID of the sender of this specific message coming from our query on our list view is not equal to our authenticated user. If this evaluates to true, then we're going to show this bubble over here. Now we can go set it up, which is basically going to be the opposite statement on our other row. We're going to enable conditional visibility. We're setting a single condition. And we are checking if the UID on the chat message, UID of sender, so the reference of the sender, is equal to our authenticated user. If the user ID of the sender is equal to the reference to our authenticated user, to the UID of our authenticated user, this is going to evaluate the true, and then we're going to show this one on the right. Hit confirm. And then unless I'm missing something, I think that everything should be set up to display the chat messages appropriately. One last thing I want to quickly get through in this lesson is making it so that this button down here, which will eventually be used to send the messages, is disabled if this here is empty so that the user can't just click this and send essentially a blank message over and over again. So on our icon button over here, we're going to scroll down and you see this little disabled button over here. We're going to enable this and then it's looking for a condition. So we want this to be disabled. We're going to go create a single condition. We want this to be disabled if in our widget state, our text field is empty or not set. So is not set or empty. So if this is empty or there's no value here, then we want this to be disabled. If this is empty, this is going to, this question is going to evaluate to true and our button will be disabled. So we're going to hit confirm. And then we can specify the fill color that we want when the button's disabled. So we're just going to put gray so that the user, it's clear to the user that the button is currently disabled. And then we can preview this. And as you can see, now it, it would be enabled. And now this is what it would look like if it was disabled. And actually, now that we're changing the color, I'm actually just going to go in and make this transparent so that we don't see the border. And now at the bottom over here, you can see the difference like so. 
one last thing we have to do to make this functionality work properly is go on our text field, go all the way down. And we're going to enable update page on text change so that every time the text changes, the page gets updated and it's going to be checking if any of the other widgets depend on the value of this text field. So we're going to turn this on and we're going to set the delay to zero because we essentially want this to instantly be activated or be enabled when our user types in anything at all in this text field. So I don't think I missed anything. We're going to go back in test mode, start a new session, and we're going to check if everything is working properly. All right, so our test session is loaded up. And keep in mind now that we're not going to see any chat bubbles because we haven't actually added the functionality to send a chat. So there are Although we have some chats created, these chats don't have any messages in them. And don't worry, that's gonna come in the very next lesson. I know I'm making you guys wait a bit, but we're getting there. So right now what we expect to see is when I click on this, we see our text field down here and you see that this is disabled. I can click it, nothing happens. And then hopefully, as soon as I type something in here, this little button is gonna go blue, indicating that it would be enabled. If I say, oops. So like this, if I say, hey, now we see that our button is blue. It doesn't do anything right now, but it's enabled. If I clear this and the text field goes back to being empty, it goes back to gray. So that's pretty much gonna do it for this lesson. 